Hey Scorpio, thank you so much for coming to your weekly love reading. This should resonate for Sun, Moon, Rising, or Venus. Those of you that are cross watching, welcome, welcome. It can be your it can be your situation or your partner's, or sometimes it's reversed depending on who's here watching the reading. So I do want to throw that out there. Uh, if you haven't already, please like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell if you want to receive alerts for when I post my readings. Also, please feel free to comment. I love reading what you have to write. And um, I try to respond back to everyone, actually. But that being said, Scorpio, let's go ahead and hop into your reading. Okay. Scorpio, Scorpio, Scorpio. All right. Who is Scorpio's person of interest romantically? Who are they thinking about while they're watching this reading? Okay, Eight of Swords. You definitely can be dealing with a Gemini or someone that has Jupiter in Gemini. All right, how does Scorpio feel about their person of interest? Ten of Cups or uh, Pisces, Pisces Mars or Mars in Pisces. What um, What is the current issue or situation with Scorpio and their person of interest? Issue or situation. Okay. Two of Cups. That is a uh, Cancer Venus. It could be Cancer. It's Cancer Venus, Pisces, or I also think it's Gemini. Um, and I'm giving you guys the signs because a lot of people ask for them. So this, I'm just, I'm just going to tell you what I see, okay? Uh, what is the current issue or uh, block or external influence for these two romantically? Block or external influence for these two romantically? Death. Okay. Definitely can be dealing with another Scorpio or uh, Scorpio. You actually can be the block possibly or something ending. And what's the best potential outcome here with love and romance for Scorpio and their person of interest? Okay. The Fool. Beautiful. And that's um, Aquarius or Pisces as well. So first things first, I definitely feel like um, whoever whoever you may be talking to, okay, I definitely feel like they're in a position where things are suspended for whatever reason. Um, I feel very strongly that uh, your person, when it comes to your relationship, you know, they tend to be the more sensitive one. They're very dreamy, uh, very romantic partner who sometimes I think may be a little bit irritable or absent-minded or have a level of insecurity. And I think that, you know, your goal, um, Scorpio, is to help them through that. I think that's why you're there. You know, they offer you that level of support, true love and compassion linked, you know, definitely with a level of spirituality. And this, for some reason, is screaming a past life relationship or a soulmate, you know? And I think that the moment that you guys really looked at each other in this way, it was like, oh, shit. You know what I mean? Like, this this definitely, um, this definitely can be my, you know, my person. I also feel strongly, too, that for you, Scorpio, you know, you view the situation as you're kind of the mediator or you know, the peace lover, like you desire a level of harmony and balance. And, you know, you're very considerate. And, and this is how you view yourself in the relationship. Okay. Very diplomatic, warm, peaceful, sensitive. Sometimes I think you know that you can be too dependent, or at times you can manipulate a situation by being passive aggressive, or whatever. But what's crazy about you is that you bend over backwards for this relationship to keep things kind of like up and running. And I really feel like you offer a level of emotional security that really doesn't happen very often, right? Like that's something that is, um, there's something hidden. You also can be dealing with a cancer. I do want to say that. I feel like for, for the both of you together, you know, um, you and this person maybe, you know, at a distance right now, or you may not be speaking. You know what I mean? Um, I feel like there's a level of being prone to disappointment for you for some reason. And it can be because your partner, you feel like they're falling short of, you know, what exactly you had in mind for them. And it can be the fact because, you know, you feel like, it's, you know, you have a sense of family and home and that's very important to you. And unless this person can fall under, 
you know, that umbrella, it's just not going to work. And, and that's something that is coming together uh, or coming across very strongly. So I'm saying I don't know if you guys are talking or not because definitely the Eight of Swords is here. I feel like your person feels like they have to sacrifice. Like there is some type of sacrifice that they're making or making not to talk. Like there's something here for like a larger transformation. Um, I definitely feel like uh, for whatever reason, your partner feels like they don't have a voice in this situation. And all they're left to do is really sit there by themselves and think about, you know, what the potential is to grow with you. You know, where does this go? Where is this journey taking us? And it can be because your partner did do something wrong, right? And maybe you caught them because before the eight of swords comes the seven of swords. And now it's like this person is stuck in, in a, a level of limbo thinking about, you know, where do things go from here? More information. What are they thinking about? All gifted. Okay. They're thinking about what exactly they can offer you. How do they give everything to you if you're not talking to them or they're not talking to you? Um, also, too, for more information. Okay. Strength is here. This person may be a Leo. You know, this person is really struggling and maybe coming off a bit defensive when it does come to you or, you know, their area. It's very much like if you're coming to attack this person or how they're looking at it, like they may, may be very defensive or, you know, lashing out in some sense because that's what they feel. Like they feel like they have to protect themselves or they feel like they have to, you know, go out of their way to hold their place with you. Why? because of the three of cups, okay? Maybe because there is a third party situation that they know about that's bothering them. This is also uh, Mercury and Cancer. You know, maybe what's being expressed right now is, um, you know, this person is showing you through their actions that they're not happy, right? Like anytime I see Cancer or Mercury and Cancer, you already know where that person stands with you. If they don't like you, they're not gonna pretend to like you. They're just not. They're going to be like, what the hell are you doing here? Did I tell you to call me? I don't like you. You know what I mean? Like Mercury and Cancer is very straightforward. They don't let anybody inside of their uh, secure bubble unless you're worthy or not. And that's why, you know, maybe they're being defensive. Also, too, I, I do feel like you and this person are bound to one another. I do get that strongly. I also feel, too that, you know, there has been a level of struggle and maybe it's a struggle for power, okay? Maybe it's, you know, trying to force a situation and I'm gonna tell you this just from your partner's point of view, maybe, you know, they felt like you were trying to force them into doing something that they just didn't wanna do, right? Or maybe they felt like you were trying to force them to change or force them to evolve or have a level of transformation, um, with their body or themselves or, you know, something of, of that nature, you know, uh, the problem is it's like they felt like you were pulling them instead of allowing it to happen naturally. And I think too, it's just really about letting go. Like there's something here definitely about needing to, you know, needing to, needing to let go and allowing this person to, you know, be exactly what they need to be. They have to level up if that's what you want. However, I know this is gonna sound crazy, but part of me feels like this person wanted to come across as uh, that very fixed king-like energy, that very, you know, strong, dominant energy. The problem is, is they weren't that, but they like to portray themselves as that. One card here for Scorpio's person of interest romantically. Eight of Wands, you also can be dealing with a Sagittarius. Maybe they're at a distance. Maybe you met them, you know, through the internet or there was a level of communication. Uh, you possibly could have met them at the gym. <laughs> that's something that's, that's definitely a possibility. Or like I said, through the internet, Instagram, Facebook, um, YouTube. Like there is a level of communication and a level of satisfaction. I feel like that this person um, provides you. 
and also allows you, you know, really to settle down and feel comfortable with what you have. And as I said, that the Queen of Cups, you also could be dealing with a Cancer, or you may feel like this person is your better half, right? Scorpio is the King of Cups. That's just what it is to me. So if I if I see the Queen of Cups come out, that's what that's telling me is this person is your better half. This person is a person that, you know, you're supposed to be with. Uh, you know, this person is definitely can possibly be a mother or a father, uh, very nurturing, very caring, um, very protecting of their security, of their cubs, of their kids, of their home. And I do feel like this person wanted to take care of you or you know, they had that, you know, they themselves feel like they were here to, to really nurture you and take you in and help you grow. And it may be a Sag or it may be a Leo. I don't know why I just told you that, but that's what I think. Okay. How you feel about them is a ton of cups. If you're not talking right now, Scorpio, I feel like you're still somewhat optimistic about how things are all like, I don't know, coming about. It's like, you, you know, because this is Mars and Pisces. So Mars and Pisces, how do they take, how do they take action? It's, it's in a very positive, op optimistic way, right? It's like, you still believe you can have your family. You still believe you can make things work and that there is a level of abundance that is coming here. Uh, what I do wanna say too though, sometimes with that cup energy, it's a level of illusion. Right. If you think about Pisces, Pisces has that dreamlike mentality where, you know, uh, Pisces run by Neptune. That's illusions. So it's almost like a false sense of what something can be. You know what I mean? So you do have to be careful about that. However, you know, I do think that this person makes you very happy. More information on how. OK. I feel like they're very giving with the Six of Pentacles here. You know, this person is, uh, creates a level of balance in your life. This is Moon and Taurus. This person is, you know, very stubborn, but they're very consistent. This person shows you uh, how they feel about you or their emotions through action. It's like, but look what I gave you. You know, this person is always there giving something or trying to, you know, I feel like, I don't want to say give you a handout, but this person is very fair and gives gifts. I mean, it's it's also a level of generosity that comes with them. And that's something that's really kind of cool. It's like this, this person really does give you, you know, whatever you need. And it may be that they have more money than you or the fact that, you know, um, they're more open to that idea of giving. There you are, King of Cups. Uh, also too, so now we have the King and the Queen, and my question was, what are they giving? And they're giving, you know, themselves to you. It also can be that they're giving physically to you. Anytime there's a King, I always, you know, first of all, that's always a fixed energy for me. Kings also represent fire, and if you think about the fixed fire signs, that's definitely Leo, but I feel like Leo is either their very first chart, but maybe they have Scorpio inside of it, or, you know, Leo is secondary, Leo Moon, Leo Rising, Leo Venus. Um, this person definitely has more masculine traits. Even if you're coming up, like if you're very water dominant in your chart, you are going to have more feminine um, attributes than you do masculine, where this person is definitely somebody that comes in and, and constantly is giving. I do feel like, though, you know, you and this person have a lot of hard work to do, especially with the Seven of Pentacles here, uh, and that is Taurus as well. So do you see where there's a lot of fixed energy? Like, this person is very, 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 like, fixed. And if you guys don't know, you know, you have cardinal, you have mutable, and you also have fixed signs, right? I feel like, you know, how you look at this person is that they have a lot to work on. <laughs> they have a lot to fix prior to even coming back in your life. And 
until that happens, there is not going to be any forward movement. There's going to be a lot of stalled energy here until this person really does put in the work and either sticks it through and maintains whatever's going on or if they change something. Because right now how it's going, it's just like you're the one giving handouts and then they're sitting here stuck, right? Seven of Pentacles, like, well, now what? And I just don't think it's fair. It's like if you're not giving them, they're not moving forward or there's no forward movement, you know, for the both of you. And that's because one person is giving and the other one isn't. And it just doesn't work like that. Like you see one person is riding the ox while the other person is kind of being dragged along. And I think at some point in time, it's like, damn, like you really have to take a step back and say, you know, is this worth it? Is this worth me investing more of my time in? Or is it not? Do I just need to say scrap it and fuck it, right? Also too, that Saturn and Taurus. That's also you feeling the need to teach them a hard le lesson about what it takes to really do the hard work and wait, you know, have a level of patience here. Possibly you're dealing with um, a Taurus, which I feel like I already said to you, or even, um, I don't know why I'm getting this, but a Gemini or a Pisces. Well, Pisces is over here, so maybe that's why. Or they have Gemini in their chart, like Gemini secondary, Gemini moon, Gemini rising, Gemini Venus. Maybe that's you. But it's almost like you're tired of always being the one to initiate things. You're just over it. How does, or what does Scorpio like about their person of interest romantically? Ace of Cups, I feel like genuinely, like, there is a lot of love there. I, I feel like you genuinely love this person. This person genuinely, Scorpio, makes you happy. You know, Justice, possibly um, a Libra. You know, you feel very balanced. I think that when you met this person, you weren't necessarily uh, expecting it, right? But, you know you felt like you and this person could have a very strong, successful partnership. You know, I just don't think that you were expecting for them necessarily to alienate you or, you know, hit you with your shortcomings. You know what I mean? And I feel like w when you're with this person, there is a level of commitment. Um, but sometimes I feel like you felt like this relationship was more so like a business deal. It offered you a level of security and stability, but then at the other part of it, it was like, what am I giving up, you know, giving up for that? And I just feel like this person was very critical. They were very by the book. If you do this, then you get hit with this. It's like they didn't necessarily have the ability to say, okay, uh, you know, here's a loophole. So this does make sense. Like, I don't necessarily know if this person had the ability to think outside the box or like they always felt like they were right or like they were the ones that can make that decision. The problem is, is if you're the one that's paying for everything and if you're the one that is that more masculine energy, that more dominant energy, the one that's giving, the one that's taking really shouldn't have shit to say. You know what I'm saying? Like this person shouldn't be the one that's like, hey, you're not doing this or hey, you're not doing that. You know what I mean? Um, okay, what do they not like about their person of interest? One more time. That was weird. What do they not like about their person of interest? The Ten of Swords. I think that this person caused you a level of pain. I think that they fucked with your mental, like, your mental uh, stability. I think that they fucked with, you know, uh, how you process things. I think that, you know, they put you in a, like they mind fucked you. They have the ability to do that. They, they can hurt you with their words. That's definitely Gemini. And I think whatever they say can cut very, very deeply and leave you in a position of, wow, like I'm extremely hurt. And the thing about this is like, whatever hurt that's come from this situation, like you've turned it around and now it's, it you know, pain has now turned into power. However, you know, I do think that that's something that was very challenging. And I also think, too, like I said earlier, this person feels like they're always right. Okay? Hierophant. They feel like, you know, um, how do I explain it? They, they, they feel very strongly on their way. And they feel like they know everything. That's what I get. 
I, I really do. I really do feel like this person thinks that they know everything. And I think that at times it's, it's expressed extremely negatively and almost comes across as noncommittal or irresponsible. You know, um, I don't know. That's just kind of what I'm pulling in. And I just feel like, you know, their words were very hurtful. <laughs> and it was just too confined for your lifestyle. It's like, if you want to go from A to B, you have to go in a straight a straight line, a straight arrow. But the problem is, is, you know, you could do a loop, swoop, and pull to get over here. Or you could do A, B, C, D, and E in order to get over here. But for this person, there was only one path and only one right way of doing it. And if you didn't follow that, then I think that that's something you didn't like is their level of narrow-mindedness. Your situation is the Two of Cups. Obviously, there's a lot of love here, right? It's like there's so much love here that when you and this person are together, when you and this person are good, it's beautiful. However, it's also about fighting for that love, okay? Five of Wands. Um, you know, the Five of Wands is, I think, that Saturn in Leo, which I can be wrong, but that's just what I think it is. Um, it's almost like you had to, you know, prepare yourself that something was coming, right? It's almost too like, you know, there's some type of level that was done by fighting for yourself, well, like standing up for other people. Or it can be too that there was just a lot of people in your guys' uh, relationship. Like love necessarily, like is there love here? Absolutely, right? Is this a soulmate connection? More than likely, Okay. However, there's just too many people involved. It can be family. It can be friends. It can be siblings. It can be parents. Um, but there's a lot of people I feel like meddling in your guys' relationship. Why? What's causing the five of wands? The hermit. Okay, maybe a Virgo. Or, you know, what's causing it is the fact that, you know, you're blocked or they're blocked. Or there is something that's not being said here. What's not being said? The nine of wands. I feel like somebody is, I don't know if it's you or them, but somebody is definitely on their knees going to beg somebody to come back and say, I'm sorry, please don't leave. Listen, I fucked up. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to do it. I understand. I needed a level of attention. You know, it can be the fact that this person needed attention. So they were doing stupid shit, right? And you caught on to it. You're like, oh no, oh hell no. I already know, right? This is Moon and Sag. This person may have felt like, you know, they needed to kind of like go out and talk to everybody or have, you know, be seen. And now it's like, or there's like a lot that happened and now all of a sudden things are suspended and you guys are just waiting to have that conversation or waiting to have that talk because it's like the inevitable is happening. What are they waiting for? What's being waited for here? The chariot forward movement or a cancer, you know, it's almost like trying to take something that's been unreliable or something that's been uncertain and push it in the direction where, you know, it's it, it's almost like forcing it to go forward, right? Forcing the level of security, forcing the level of, you know, nurturing. And it can be, too, that you felt stuck because you guys couldn't move. Maybe this has to do about seeing each other or moving with one another, but there's definitely something here about having a level of forward movement, even though you're stuck. But I feel like that forward movement comes after there is a level of transformation here, after something is worked on. And it's something I don't think that you can physically show. Like, I don't know if your partner has to work on something or you do, but it's something that is, is from within. It's a transformation that's happening from within that's done by hard work, that's done by doing the work. Like you have the Seven of Pentacles, well now you have the Eight of Pentacles, right? You have the Eight of Pentacles and you have that with Temperance. So Temperance is all about taking, you know, they're the alchemists. So you're taking two different things and you're stripping it of all their impurities and you're polishing them together and you're combining them as one, right? And something that's coming out is now all the great qualities and attributes are now very well refined and have the ability to be presented. 
right? But that comes from doing the work. Like that comes from going from that seven, like I said, the seven of the chariot to the eight, right? That goes from having a level of uncertainty, unreliability to settling down, to really bearing, digging your heels in and having a smooth transition. But it's one that's not seen. It's one that's very much undercover. How does Scorpio feel about this? The Five of Cups. You may feel guilty. I'm going to be honest. And that's definitely Scorpio energy. There may be a level of guilt here, which is kind of interesting. And it can be the fact that you're trying to feel like you like you fear or like you're avoiding almost the inevitable. Right. And it's also the fact that I think that you need a level of reassurance. This is Mars and Scorpio. Right. It also can be the fact that there was just a lot of questions. Right. And a lot of things that were being done underneath, you know, not necessarily out in the open. You know, don't get mad at me, Scorpio, but I think Scorpios definitely have that level of get back, right? That level of revenge. And I think that somebody feels guilty. Why do they feel guilty? Whoa. Because of the Ten of Wands, okay? Somebody may have gone outside of the relationship and had sex with somebody else. Possibly a Sagittarius. Yeah, three of swords, or this person is a Libra, Saturn in Libra. It's something that definitely ended the relationship or something that has the potential. I feel like whoever this person is, they feel very guilty about their actions, three of swords. It's like they went back and forth on what they should do, and then they just did the wrong thing. Why? Because of the nine of pentacles. And the nine of pentacles... For me, like, I don't know. The Nine of Pentacles sometimes is hard, right? Because it's like this person feels like they had the abundance, they were doing the work from the Eight of Pentacles, and then boom, now, you know, they're rewarded. This can be also a job. Maybe they, you know, uh, were talking to somebody at their work. Or maybe they had a little, you know, uh, hitch in their giddy, or maybe they felt like, you know, uh, they were feeling themselves, Right. Either way, like there was a level of security here, material security or a level of uh, superiority, as I should say. And that's what allowed them to kind of disconnect from the situation and feel like they could have whatever they want. Like he's cutting her hair. Like that is her hair. That is not his. He felt like whatever she has is also his and he can take whatever he wants. And I don't know about you guys, but for me, it's like, no, that's mine. If you want it, you can ask or you can do the hard work for yourself. You know what I mean? But don't take some shit without asking, especially if it's a materialistic possession. This has to do with money. This has to do with some type of weird, like, I don't know. There's something around money here, though, a job, security, like it was something that had to do like this person constantly was asking for money or this person is you or this person because it can go both ways, right? They constantly needed something, but then they wanted to flaunt it like it was their own. When in reality, none of it was theirs or yours. It was a person who did the hard work. It was a person who, you know, had the ability to think out of the box and not be an asshole. You know what I mean? All right. So for your block or, you know, whatever, we have death. So Scorpio, this may be you, or this literally can mean the ending to whatever is going on here and a level of transformation. It also can be that like a birth, right? Um, why is death here? Because of the four of swords, right? There's a lot of thinking going on. And this is Libra in um, Jupiter, Jupiter in Libra. Like, there's a lot going on here with where does this go? How do I expand? Where do I go from here? Well, what happens at this point? You know what I mean? It's no longer the excitement of hearing certain things, but it's also a level of putting something to it, right? It's almost also to, okay, the Three of Swords is there, which cut deeply, and now you're in the process of really thinking about everything, taking everything in. Somebody is very quiet, and they're taking everything in. And they're noting it. 
It's like they're journaling it. They're sitting there writing down, this happened, boom, this happened, boom. Pros and cons, right? Very Libra. Trying to have a level of balance and harmony that's best for everyone. And maybe, you know, not what's just best for one. And it really has to do about their security. That's Venus and Aries. This really has to do about, you know, them settling down and, and, and really, you know, digging their heels in into what they want and not budging. You know what I mean? Like, they feel like this is their life and they're going to take control of it. And how are they going to take control over love and relationship? They're going to physically take control of it, whether they have to cut you out or not. And that's how I feel like you feel, Scorpio. What's causing the death? The Empress, okay, Libra or Taurus, or this can also be the fact that somebody's pregnant. Somebody's doing what's best for them, or this can be a mother or father situation where maybe, you know, there's, I know that there's a lot of people that watch it that are with arranged marriages. Maybe, you know, someone in your family is saying, hey, no, you need to end this shit because they're not the same like we are, right? It's something that's, it, it's a decision that's being done that's best for the family, and it's being done, you know, from the empress point of view of in order for me to be successful, in order for me to create and be happy, I have to focus on my level of security. I have to focus on my home. I have to focus on those that need my attention and my love. How does Scorpio feel about the empress? The four of pentacles? You see, it's like, <clears throat> and that's Taurus. Either you're the four of pentacles and you're very protective of what's yours. Like you're not allowing this person to come close to you because you're like, no, that's mine. Right? Like you're very much like, this is mine. You stay the hell back. Right? Very protective of who's coming in your place. Or if this is your partner, princess of wands reverse. That's why I think the empress may be you because if it's your partner, it's the Princess of Wands reversed. It's like, no, you don't want any forward movement with this person. You want this person to leave you alone. For some reason, it's like you know that they're doing something they're not supposed to do, like intuitively. And you may have physically seen something. And that's why you're like, no, you need to get your shit together. You got to say, you got to stay back. Um... One card here for the block, two of cups. I mean, I just think for whatever reason, you go back and forth because there's so much love between you and them. That just shot out. And it can be with a Libra or a Cancer. I feel like also what's blocking is that idea of that security or that stability. It's like, the stability is there if this person stops being selfish. You know, uh, the security is there if this person can, you know, make a decision. The, the security is there if they can watch what they say. You know what I mean? Like, and I think that you definitely see that. I really do. And I feel like for whatever reason, you know, you feel like you're very bound to this person, which maybe, you know, you are having a child with them, or maybe you do have children with them, or, you know, it was something where your soul told you, hey, you're meant to be with this person. The problem is this person has a lot of work to do before they can be that father or that mother figure, you know, that's very substantial in, you know, your life. And I think that things are changing. I just think that, you know, there's something that has to end before something else begins. That's what I get strongly. And I feel like, too, I'm going to be honest, with death here, there's something that you know that that's not being said. It's like the unspoken. And it can come down to, you know, what's going on behind closed doors, right? Or it can also be what they're investing their time or their money in. Um, and maybe you just don't think it's right. Maybe you feel like their energy is being put in different places. Also, too, you could feel like maybe they're having sex with different people or you know, there is some type of sexual nature going on here that you don't approve of. It's, it's highly immature. It's like you don't want to go anywhere with this person. You're done opening up because, you know, maybe you feel like they don't have any ambition or maybe there's no drive to make things better. 
or they just take down your lack of energy. I mean, it could be it could be numerous of things, but the fact that they're coming in with the Prince of Wands reversed, I mean, I don't think that that's a positive thing. I'm going to be honest. And let me ask one more time. How does uh, Scorpios, okay. I was going to say, how does your person feel about this? And it's the lovers. Gemini, how does Scorpio's person of interest feel about the situation or about the block with blocking them? It's death. You see what I'm saying? It's an ending. It's like they know things are ended. And they know that they either have to level up in the name of love or they have to level out. Because they have to change. There's something to be learned here. The world card. Capricorn, Taurus, Leo, Scorpio, Aquarius. What do they feel like they need to learn? The Four of Pentacles. I think the Four of Pentacles is also too, like, saying, especially in this deck, it's saying, like, even if things aren't as fiery and crazy or whatever, it's still all about sticking the course, right? There's always not going to be a ton of excitement. There's always not going to be that ignition, right? However, it is being said that it is important to know that there is something that's burning here and there's something very real. Like they equivalent this to, you know, coals, like hot rocks, right? But I definitely think that a level of ego is going to have to die in order to have this situation come, you know, come to fruition. And that's Capricorn Sun. It may be physically a Capricorn. That a situation with a Capricorn needs to end. But it's 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 also too, you know, having that very ambitious drive, but driving towards the right things. One more card here, please. How does um Scorpio's person of interest, how do they feel about the current situation or issue with Scorpio and them? Okay. The Nine of Wands. You see what I'm saying? They know it's stuck. They know that in order for things to progress, there there has to be something that's done or there has to be something that's said or else it's going to say, you know, suspended forever. There has to be a level of action that's taken here or else shit, like I said, is literally going to be done because, you know, there's something that's hanging here. There's something that's in suspense. Something has to... You know, anytime I see the hangman, that's all about a level of sacrifice that's needed because the tower moment is here. The tower moment's here because of the nine of swords and the seven of swords. Somebody lied. Somebody did some fuck shit. Somebody wanted to play the victim. And now all this is happening because of this situation. Um, and yeah. So for those of you that this has brought enough clarity, thank you. I love you. And um, I'll talk to you guys later. Peace.